Hello, my name is Rowan. Today I'm going to read you The Nightmare Queen by Aurora 66. This is a steampunk story about a dark character who lived in the shadows and thrived there. So without further ado, let's begin. Find the nest, wipe them out once and for all. From her spot atop the huge machine, Millie stuck out her tongue at the factory owner's back. With all the steam that filled the air, he wouldn't be able to see her face anyway. Only a stooped woman working nearby glanced up at her quickly, shaking her head. But she couldn't hide a grin either. Millie pulled the gas mask over her mouth and nose, sorted her pigtails and stuffed her working equipment into her battered bag. She opened the hatch in front of her and slid down into the darkness inside the metal monster. Find their nest. Underneath the factory, there was a hidden palace. Only from far away, the huffing and puffing of steam engines sounded through the shadows. It was a different world, a world where everything was upside down. The rounded parts of archways formed the floor, while the ceiling was perfectly flat. Even the lamps that cast a blood red glow on the stone walls hung the wrong way. It wasn't the first time Millie had come down here, yet still a chill ran down her spine. After having to squeeze herself through the tight spaces inside the engine, she felt tiny when she was surrounded by these wide halls. At the same time, it was as though she had stepped into the realm of fairy tales and legends. Down here, she was not just another street rat kid earning a meagre wage in a factory. Down here, she imagined herself as a heroine, bravely facing all terrors. She even had admirers. Millie softly clicked her tongue to let them know she had arrived. Come on, my little friends, where are you? Her voice was muffled by the gas mask, but she knew they'd recognize it. Dozens of small feet tapped through the darkness. Black shapes moved in the dim lamplight. They resembled rats, but they were none. Their bodies were silvery white skeletons, not made of bone, but of metal. Quietly ticking cogwheels and a brilliant red flame beneath their ribs kept them alive. The artificial rats scurried over to get close to Millie. They jumped up on her legs and squilled with excitement. Cold, hard noses prodded at her until she reached into her pockets and pulled out a handful of breadcrumbs. The rats almost toppled over each other. I know, I know, Millie chuckled and gave the food to them. The small creatures nibbled away at the crumbs with needle-like teeth, despite the fact that they fell straight through their fleshless jaws. They always waited for her. Two months had passed since she had been hired to get rid of the pests inside the factory's innards. But ever since then, Millie had done nothing but feed the metal rats with the bread that should have been the bait for traps. Why should she have harmed them? No adult could follow her to the inside of the machines, least of all the fat factory owner. But now he had come up with something new. Without noticing, Millie began to bite her fingernails while she watched the rats gobble down the bread. Her other hand felt the equipment inside her bag. Not just the usual traps, but something much more lethal. A gas bomb. You say it'll take months before you've caught all the rats. Very well. Then you won't catch them, you'll smoke them out. She was supposed to bring him no less than 200 dead bodies, among them the oldest and biggest of the creatures. It didn't matter that they weren't even real animals. It didn't matter that they trusted her so much. The factory owner had promised Millie the wage of four months for just this one day of work, and for him, that was that. What could she do? Without her wage, she'd starve. <sighs> she freed herself from the huddle of silver bodies that had formed around her feet, but she couldn't look at the rats anymore. Her throat had gone tight. 
She moved quickly before she could decide to turn and run, following the rat's path toward their nest. Smoke probably won't even affect them, Millie thought, trying to convince herself. Her thoughts were the jumble. If the smoke didn't work, she'd lose her income, but if it did... She'd lose the only friends she had. She knew immediately when she had found the nest, even though she'd never ventured this deep below before. It was the heart of this palace, beneath the streets of London, yet it was no heart that provided the body with energy. It was a parasite, something that took apart the factory bit by bit. A pile of metal towered in front of Millie. Screws? Pipes, cogwheels, pieces of mesh, mostly dark and rusty, almost touched the large hall's ceiling, even though this room probably arched down too, like everything else down here. The collection was far too big to be taken from one factory alone. It seemed as though the rats accumulated every piece of metal they could find in the city. They picked up a part here, and another one there, and carried them to the top of the pile, an endless procession as if someone had lined them up on a string. Up and down again. Hundreds of them. Millie gaped at the diligent little workers with her mouth hanging open. Incredible. Then she noticed the figure, standing at the highest point of the metal mountain. At first she thought it was a man, but a split second later she knew she was wrong. The figure had two arms too many and leathery wings. When it turned around, Millie saw a frightful face, as rough and dark as the wings and the entire body, with holes instead of eyes, and a brilliant red glow behind them that already seemed familiar. Like the flames inside the silver rats and the lamps on the walls. What an ugly beast! This was the owner of the secret palace the master of the rats. A half-finished one hung from one of the creature's hands, head and ribcage completed and shining, but the rest nothing but a coil of withered metal. Welcome to my realm, human child, hissed the winged one with a voice like crackling fire. Welcome to the realm of the Nightmare King. With strange staccato movements, the figure descended from the metal pile. The long, pitch-black legs had more joints than any other beings. Wherever the clawed feet touched the ground, something rustled underneath the machine parts. Something was digging its way to the surface. Millie took a deep breath and clutched the gas bomb she held hidden between the folds of her clothes. Only a few more steps, and the so-called Nightmare King would be within throwing distance. Suddenly, she knew what to do. She watched the rats working away for this creature, just like the people in the factory slaved away for the owner, and she felt a bitter determination rising within her. The Nightmare King had no idea what was coming at him. It is an honour, Your Majesty, Millie said. She started to bow. The creature's lipless mouth stretched into a smile just when Millie threw the bomb. A roar thundered through the hall, and the Nightmare King spread his wings. The mountain of metal exploded just as yellow smoke swallowed the world. The silver rats were catapulted through the air, shrieking, and their bodies burst on the walls. Bits of ash mixed with the poisonous smoke as the flames inside them died. From underneath the pile of trash, an army emerged, an army of small creatures with leathery wings. The Alps were merely the size of Millie's forearm, yet their sheer number turned them into a force of nature. The gas didn't bother them at all, and somewhere above her head, she could hear the Nightmare King laughing. You might kill rats with this, but not the creatures of darkness. He swooped down and Millie ducked, but instead of avoiding a collision, she's crashed straight into one of the smaller alps. It clawed at her hair, and while Millie tried to ward it off, the Nightmare King's voice cut through the cacophony of noise. When the yellow smoke parted, he stood right in front of Millie. She could smell his breath, even through the gas mask, like 
burnt flesh in the dead of night. Just wait, little girl. Wait until the city fills with people for your great exhibition. Then we'll show the children of the world that the children of the night are more than just old superstitions. He let the half-finished metal rat swing back and forth in front of her eyes. They're only robots, empty and dumb, but they'll carry more nightmares to the world than ever before. The Nightmare King exhaled, and for a moment a bright red light flared inside the silver ribcage. Images erupted in Millie's head, twisted human bodies, faces distorted by pain, a mother coughing blood just before her death, a sea of blood and broken bones. It was a swell that pulled her down towards unimagined darkness at its bottom. A nightmare, the most awful nightmare Millie ever had. The Nightmare King was laughing. He leaned even closer. Now we can test them all on you. Millie saw the elves behind him jump up and down in spiteful glee. They couldn't wait to see her suffer, but the artificial rats had grown completely still. They were watching, intently. What did the king say? Empty and dumb? No. Slowly, in order not to attract the large elves' attention, she reached into her pockets with both hands. She closed her fingers around as much bread as she could hold at once. With a war cry, she held it at the Night King's face. He looked startled, astonished, and then he was buried beneath a flood of silver bodies. The rats darted at their master from all sides. They shrieked and bit and tore him off his feet. The elves tried to pry them from their king, but as soon as they touched a rat, they froze. Within seconds, the red glow of their eyes faded away while the fire inside the rats burned brighter than ever. The silver creatures were sucking the unborn nightmares from their hosts, feeding on them, and unlike Millie's breadcrumbs, the thoughts of terror did not fall through. She did not stay to watch the fight. Millie ran for her life. Behind her back, the Nightmare King roared, and when she glanced back, he rose to his full height once again. He heaved his body into the air, but all his movements seemed tired and painful. You will regret this day, his voice echoed through the dark corridor, but Millie only laughed while she ran. The red lamps went dark as she passed them, and soon she was surrounded by utter blackness. But she knew she had escaped the King of the Night. A long red glow appeared in front of her feet just then, and the rat showed her the way. Millie followed it to the surface, and climbed out of a gully after what felt like forever. It wasn't even evening yet. The rat let out a squeal and rose to its hind legs. Expectantly, it smelled the pocket that still held the last bits of bread. Instead of feeding it, though, Millie swooped the small creature up in her arms and twirled it around in the middle of the road. The passers-by looked at her strangely, but she didn't care. She danced through the streets of London with her little helper on her arm until night fell and tinted everything dark blue. Then Millie sat down on the curb and let the rat feed from her palm. I think, she told her new friend, we'll get along just great. They had both lost their masters since Millie could hardly return to the factory with her work undone, but she already had an idea how to fend for their living. By the time the World Exhibition opened, she was no longer catching rats nor working in any factory at all. She had turned to a much more lucrative business. While more and more visitors poured into the city, a number of complaints grew frequent. That the bad air and muddy water of the Thames caused headaches and bad dreams, hallucinations even. The Nightmare King had regained his strength, but that was just what Millie drew her profit from. After the fight in the underground palace, more and more metal rats had turned up around her. They came to plunder her bread savings and slept under her bed, 
from where the captured nightmares cast a soft glow on the floorboards. Millie sent them out to devour other people's bad dreams, just like they had done with the nightmares the Alps had carried. And that was now how she earned her living. She didn't depend on the factory owner anymore. He could catch his own rats now. Millie very much preferred to be the little creature's heroine and not their enemy. When the rats were there, she was not even afraid of the Nightmare King's revenge. We upload a new story every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to us, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Goodbye.